Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, T. So I want to do an update on the whole Charlemagne the God situation. So if you guys do not know, the other day I had posted on my Instagram page that the young lady who's accusing Charlemagne of rape from 17 years ago, her name is Jessica Reed. So she's really upset that South Carolina would not reopen her rape case. So now what she's deciding to do is take it to the Supreme Court. She's really upset by this, and she feels like Charlemagne should pay for what he did to her. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys an article from The Blast. Go ahead and check this out. Out. So the blast obtained a letter from Jessica Reed that was sent to John S. Nicholas, a deputy for the Supreme Court Office of Disciplinary Counsel in South Carolina. She writes that she was uncooperative at the time of the investigation because of being traumatized and claims that it was the prosecutor's responsibility to defend her. Reed now wants to file an official claim against the prosecution for allowing Charlemagne to cut a plea deal and dismiss the charge of criminal sexual conduct with a minor. The 32-year-old woman says, There was no investigation done to bring justice and claims Charlemagne continues to violate me on the radio, in his book, and on social media. So you guys just heard me read what Jessica sent to the state Supreme Court. So she's really upset, you know what I'm saying? And right now it seems like her case is definitely picking up some type of traction. A lot of people on social media have been giving Charlemagne the God the side eye. There's all types of petitions being brought up. So now Charlemagne the God is finally addressing the situation. And yesterday he talked about those two audios that had leaked out recently about him, you know, talking about Spanish fly. Another one was talking about, you know, how he had sex with his wife the first time and it was rape. So he's addressing both of these. He seems very, very sincere. He's seems very apologetic i want you guys to go ahead and listen to this first clip it's about six minutes long check this out and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary how is everybody on this beautiful monday morning you know i have been sitting back watching everything that has been said about me via social media it's very interesting and i could tell who really follows me listens to me because i think people who are really in tune with what it is i do realize that i have grown a lot the reason I will never stop evolving is because the best apology is always change behavior. And every day I strive to grow and learn more and make the world a better place just by being the change I want to see in the world. One of the main changes that I do want is I want the world to be a safer place for all women. If you listen to the Brilliant Idiots podcast and you know I was moving towards this before there was a Time's Up or Me Too movement. That's why y'all call me PC to God now. Y'all say things like, women got Charlemagne shook. For me, it's simple. When you know better, you do better, and you teach better. And that's what I have attempted to do horribly on this podcast. Um, I posted this today because I want to address some clips that have been floating around from the podcast, as well as Vlad TV, where I fail to have productive, mature conversations around issues that demand respect. I, I tell you all all the time, I'm not an expert at anything. I just have some experiences, so I try to share my experiences. So... I started to go see a therapist. That's one experience I've been sharing. And back in 2015, I attempted to have a dialogue about rape culture with an emphasis on the role men play. And a clip was pulled from that conversation. And I can honestly say I communicated that all wrong. I totally understand why y'all are on my ass and you have every right to be. I, I didn't handle that conversation in the right way. And I was looking at some comments last night of rape survivors who were triggered by that conversation. And I have to apologize to y'all because that was not my intentions with that conversation. And I don't think those kind of conversations should happen in this space, even though I have always been an open book and I strive to use my life as an example for others. But I didn't get it right with this one, and I have to apologize for that. But for the record, in 1997, I was having consensual sex with a young lady after we went to the sex store, keyword we, and got Spanish fly which is an aphrodisiac, not a drug. You know, it's supposed to increase libido and create a super sexual experience. We were both aware that we were going to put this in a bottle of brandy. That's why we got the cola flavor. But I didn't explain that situation well at all back in 2015 because the way social media took it was that I was confessing to drugging and having sex with an incoherent woman. That, that wasn't the case. Because once again, Spanish fly is not a drug. It's sold in the sex store. It's sold in drug stores. It comes in flavors. You know, we got some and had consensual sex. Then we both passed out because we were both wasted. Okay, that's what I was attempting to convey, how two condoning parties were under the influence of alcohol. We was wasted. The point of that whole conversation, you know, was discussing situations that seemed so normal to us back then. But now, in light of the conversation, 
you know, uh, centered around rape culture, they are extremely sketchy to us now. And my attempt is to always create a space where a grown man who has learned from his mistakes can speak on those sketchy situations. You know, I want people to learn from my ways. And I have told people on this podcast numerous times to avoid any gray areas, okay? Don't have sex with a woman when she is extremely high, drunk, on pills, whatever. If she is incoherent in any way, leave her alone. And I want to stress that, okay? I didn't take advantage of anyone. And I want to apologize to anyone who was triggered by that story. You know, I have women really close to me who have been drugged and sexually assaulted, so that's not an issue I would ever make light of or play with. You know, I don't have any problem apologizing when I'm wrong. And the way I communicated that story in that clip was dead-ass wrong. So, again, I apologize. I also want to talk about the Vlad TV clip. You know, that video was from 2013. I'm discussing hitting a woman when I was 16 years old. Okay, young with a fragile ego, filled with insecurities. There was no legitimate reason for me to do what I did, but I did it. I immediately regretted it, and I knew it was wrong. In that Vlad TV interview, I said I made a mistake, but I also made a mistake by generalizing that all men have put their hands on a woman at some point. I I'm not going to speak for everyone else. I'm only going to speak for myself. That was my unique experience, and I shared that story because I don't want young men or men in general to make the same mistakes I made, regardless of what age they were. You know, we also have had several podcast discussions in regards to hitting women. Remember the elevators? You know, God gave us two moments to learn from that week of the elevators. It was Ray Rice in the elevator and Jay-Z in the elevator. What have I always said? Always go Jay-Z. Okay, I don't condone putting your hands on a woman. And let's be clear, I'm 40 years old. In that Vlad TV clip, I might might have been 35 discuss, discussing something that I did at 16. And being 16 is not an excuse it's never okay to put your hands on a woman, and I knew it was a mistake when I did it, and once again, I said that in the Vlad TV clip. It was a mistake, and I'll continue to say it was a mistake because, once again, I'm using my life experiences to teach, okay? Learn from my mistakes because I've made a lot of them, and clearly, I'm not afraid to discuss them, but I'm pretty sure I do a better job discussing them now than I did a few years ago, and I will continue to have those conversations, but the right way because I feel like we— won't be able to grow as a society and culture if we don't have these discussions. And personally, I want to be a positive part of that conversation, but I haven't been. And for that, I apologize. But I think that I have found a way to have those conversations about rape culture and abuse of power and men creating toxic environments for women to be harmed. And you will hear more from me over the coming week and really for the rest of my life on those issues. I have two daughters one on the way, a beautiful wife. You know, my future is female, regardless, okay? And I got a slew of homegirls who require me to do and be better. So I'm just grateful for the women, you know, creating space for victims and survivors through the Me Too and Time's Up movement and just women in general, period. And I look forward to using my platform more responsibly to bring healing to victims and to just being a better ally. So once again, I apologize, and we will talk again later this week. And always remember that making mistakes is better than faking perfections. Peace. All right, so you guys just heard Charlemagne's apology and him basically, you know, stating what happened and why the audio was put out there. So now, as of today, he's taken to the Breakfast Club and he's addressing this on the Breakfast Club as well. Now, this was really interesting. This is how I know Charlemagne the God is definitely pressed and he's definitely worried because, you know, he barely ever talks about his wife. We've only seen her like once or twice. Um, the Shade Room found a picture of her a few months ago and, you know, they were walking outside of some store, but you rarely ever see see Charlemagne picture with his family he doesn't talk about his family very often but I understand why because he doesn't want them in the public eye he doesn't want them getting threats he doesn't want them being harassed and stuff like that so I do respect him for you know keeping them more shielded from everything but I really find it interesting that today he brought his wife on the show and basically she's talking about the whole situation and saying that Charlemagne did not rape her that they were both drunk so this Breakfast Club interview was very, very interesting. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this audio, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. So the audio clip they got circulating online, of course, is edited, and it stops at me just saying, yeah, but she told me, yeah, I can see how people say that, but that's not what happened with us. It's not like I said no. Well, let me call her. Let me call her. Stop acting like you have her phone number. I gave you her number, okay? I let, let me <laughs> call her. That's so call crazy. And uh, Charlamagne would definitely call your wife if need be. That is not true. Yes, I would you never, would. You had, never. Definitely had Envy call his wife when he I was make in the call. Trauma. Let me call her. Hold on. Mo, 
Yeah. Do you feel like discussing this headline? You know, I've never called you to uh, to have you on the radio. The last time you've been on the radio was 1999 at Z93 Jams in Charleston, South Carolina, New Year's Eve. We kissed on the radio. Wow. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. So t talk to the people, baby. Did I rape you the first time we had sex with each other? Uh, Lenard, you need to learn how to First of all, only Monique calls me Lenard. I'm just playing. Go ahead. No, I call you Lenard. Forget that. You need to learn how to tell stories. You shouldn't have used the word rape, first of all, because the conversation that we were having is about rape culture. So the conversation that we were having was that you felt like it was okay for you to have sex with me while I was intoxicated. That's a rape culture thing. That's not rape. So when you asked me that question, I was hesitant to answer you because you used the word rape, but, I mean, that's not what went down. Like, we both know what happened. And I was not passed out. I was very coherent. Like, enough for me to lift up my hips so you could take my panties off. So Knock it yeah, off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, that's what happened. You knew this what happened. And the next morning, we had sex. So, I We mean, had sex I the next morning. Anything. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Your memory is for shit. You don't remember anything. And first kiss that night, too. That was our first kiss that night. Wow, you guys dated for a year? That was your yes. first kiss? She made me wait for a year. Yes. You couldn't even get, she didn't like you really at first. What are you talking about? We used to go on dates all the time. And y'all never kissed for a year? She's a good woman, okay? <laughs> all right. Angela, are you, are you questioning me? Like, what's up? What, what no, I'm just saying a year. For a kiss? Uh, yes, for a kiss. I know this might be inappropriate. Okay, we don't ask it then. Was he good? <laughs> <laughs> was he at least good? Yeah, have a good, have a good morning, baby. I don't know why y'all be acting like my wife the one for smoke. She, she has no problem giving the smoke. Honey. All right, so you guys just heard what Charlemagne the God had to say. You guys heard what his wife also had to say. Now, I'm going to say this, okay? This topic was pretty serious. You know, we're talking about date rape. We're talking about rape culture. We're talking about rape in general. Can somebody explain to me why Angela Lee thought this was the appropriate time to get her hair braided? Like, really, girl, you couldn't have found a time before the show, after the show, just wore your hair loose like you do any other day. She had to get her hair braided. It just made the whole show just kind of look really cringy. And it made it look like they weren't taking the situation as seriously as they needed to. Also, DJ Envy sat there and asked, you know, the wife, you know, how did it feel? Did it feel good? You know, it's like, why would you even say something like that? That was just creepy within itself. You know, like I said before... I'm not saying that Charlemagne is guilty or not guilty. It is not my job to prosecute him. None of that, okay? He went to court. They found him not guilty. You know, he pled to a lesser charge. You know, there's all types of technicalities in there. I already broke that down in the other video. I'm not going to go ahead and repeat myself again. But I do find this whole situation very, very problematic. Let me start with Jessica Reed, okay? I really feel in my heart of hearts something happened to that young girl at that party. There was a rape kit done. Even Charlemagne's words, he was saying that the girl was, you know, acting crazy, throwing stuff around, setting fires. That's not normal. That's the behavior of somebody who's potentially drugged, who's bewildered, and who's fighting to protect their body. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like something went on in that room. That young girl was raped. Was it Charlemagne who raped her? I don't know, okay? I don't know. All I know is that he was found not guilty, okay, and that he pled to something lesser. With that being said, I understand her wanting closure. I understand her being upset. I understand her feeling like she's reliving this over and over again every time Charlemagne talks about this in a reckless manner, puts it in his book and everything else. She sees him prospering. She sees him doing good. He's getting all types of deals. I talked about his HBO deal in my last video. You know, he's coming up. He's going mainstream now, and I feel like that's definitely not only bothering her, but the mother as well. But like I told y'all on Instagram, I know some of y'all want to twist my words because some of y'all can't damn read okay like I said on Instagram where was the same energy 17 years ago now am I saying that the 15 year old child who was raped needed to have that energy no of course not anybody with common sense knows I'm not talking about Jessica Reed I'm talking about her mother okay and like I stated in my first video the person who dropped the ball in this case who Jessica needs to be really upset with is not the prosecuting attorney you need to be upset with your mother okay your mother felt that her reputation and her being in a small town in South Carolina and her not wanting the neighbors and the church folks to whisper about her she thought that was more important than protecting her child okay her mother should 
should have went through with the full investigation, should have made sure anybody who was involved in touching her daughter that night was prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, okay? So when I say, where was all this energy 17 years ago, that's what I mean, okay? You can't tell me her mom is still not the driving force behind this. Her mom should have been there for her daughter because honestly, I don't see this going to the Supreme Court. South Carolina even said that they're not going to reopen the case. I don't think it's gonna get any further. This young girl needs to find closure. She needs to find healing. But most of all, she needs to realize that the person who let her down, the person who dropped the ball was her mother and the guy who raped her. You know what I'm saying? Whoever that was, be it Charlemagne, be it somebody else, I don't know. You know, but something definitely happened to her. But you know, again, there's a such thing as double jeopardy. You can't come back years later and then want to pursue something. If that's the case, they'd be a lot more people in jail. You know, with that being said, I also had to hold Charlemagne the God accountable as well. While I will recognize him for changing, you know what I'm saying? Because we all grow every day. We all change, you know what I mean? And we all want to be recognized for when we change for the better. I will say he's calmed down a whole lot than when he first came onto the Breakfast Club. He was disgusting. He was misogynistic. He was sniffing women's seats and talking about, you know, sucking farts out of people's asses. Like he was just so vulgar. It was hard to even watch that show sometimes. You know what I'm saying? There were times I even had to drag him like when he just so-called disrespected Masika when she came on the show. And I'm no fan of Masika, but the way he treated her was trash. And I've caught him out on those behaviors. But Charlemagne has grown a lot. He's trying to clean up his image. He's trying to go mainstream. That might be the reason now why he's apologizing and he's bringing his wife on the show. But I think that, you know, people should learn from this situation. Sometimes things that you say in the past can come back to haunt you, even if you're saying them in jest, okay? Charlemagne brought a lot of this on himself. Nobody knew about this girl. Nobody knew about the case. Nobody went digging. He chose to divulge this information to DJ Academics, okay? And then on top of that, he chose to, you know, talk about Spanish fly and putting things in women's drinks in a reckless manner. He chose to talk about the potential rape of his wife. These are all things that Charlemagne chose to talk about that nobody knew about for shock value, for attention, you know, as a bragging right. He did all of this, so he has nobody to blame but himself now that these words are coming back to bite him in the ass. Ass. But with that being said, I'm still not going to say that he's a flat out rapist because again, I'm not there and there are three sides to every story. His side, her side, and the truth. I hope that this young woman ends up getting closure. But like I said in my original video, I really hope that people learn from this, okay? One, watch your words. Watch the stuff that you put out there. Because, yeah, you might be a little small fish, you know, at this point in time. You might just be trolling on social media. But then you never know where you may be in the future. And those same tweets, those same comments, those same sound bites can come back to bite you in the ass. So that's one lesson that people need to take from the Charlemagne the God situation. Another lesson is once again, as parents, it is our job to do our due diligence to protect our children, okay? If we know that our sons, our daughters, because boys get raped too, okay, are being hurt, abused, raped, molested, it is our job as parents to protect them and to prosecute those offenders to the fullest extent of the law, okay? Stop being ashamed. Stop worrying about what the neighbors think. Stop worrying about people judging you, you know what I'm saying, as a parent or thinking that you're a bad parent. Don't worry about that. Your only concern should be the healing of your child and the prosecution of the person who violated your child. So there's a lot of lessons to take from this. At the end of the day, people are going to come up with their own conclusion. They're going to have their own opinion. You're either going to think that Charlemagne the God is guilty no matter what, or you're going to think that this girl is just looking for money. She's just looking for attention. Everybody has an opinion on the case. But like I said, at the end of the day, I don't feel like this case is going to make it to the Supreme Court. I don't see the Supreme Court opening this up if South Carolina's local courts wouldn't even open this up. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situation. Once again, concerning the whole Jessica Reed situation and Charlemagne the God coming out and now trying to defend himself and also bringing his wife on The Breakfast Club. How did you guys feel about that? How do you feel about what his wife had to say? And then how do you feel about Angela Yee sitting in the middle of the studio getting her damn hair braided? I don't know what the hell that was about. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. So for you guys wondering what I'm sipping on today, the tea that I have in my cup is my hair and nail tea. This is a really good tea to help keep your nails long and strong and to keep your hair healthy. So if you're interested in purchasing a bag, make sure you guys click the link down below. 
Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.